if I look a bit dishevelled, it's because it's a really windy day up here in my little shepherd's hut overlooking Pendle Hill. Um, there are big grey and black clouds this May day and I'm quite pleased because I've got a lot of potatoes and other vegetables planted that need watering. But the story that I'm going to share is a story, a very old story, that comes from Bleasdale. And it's a story about a time when there were no clouds because there hadn't been any rain for weeks and weeks and months. Long ago, long, long, long ago, in the village of Bleasdale, there was a great sadness because there had been no rain for so long that the streams had dried up, the rivers had dried up, and even the little spring near the top of Parlick Fell wasn't gushing forth as much as it normally did. There was just a little teeny tiny trickle of water left in it. And the villagers didn't know what to do. The grass wasn't growing, the sheep couldn't eat grass because it was all dying. Nothing was growing, there was nothing to drink and they didn't know who to turn to. And one of them said, what about the old hen wife? the wise woman who lives on the edge of the village. And so they went to see her and she looked at them and she said, you know what? The problem lies with the fact that we don't respect Mother Nature enough. We should respect her more. Leave it with me and I'll think about it. And that's what she did. She thought long and she thought hard, but she didn't want to be thinking for too long because it was an emergency, no water. And she went to her favorite thinking place the henwife's favourite place for thinking things over was high up near the summit of Parlick Fell, on a rock that overlooked the valley below, a rock where it was a perfect place to sit and enjoy the view and think. And that rock's still there today. If you're ever walking up Parlick, it's a wonderful place to stop and have a look at the view. She sat there, it was a late afternoon sunshine, and she thought, we need to show our respect for Mother Nature more. The best thing to do is to sing to the four elements, the four parts of Mother Nature. If I sing to the, to the air and ask it to bring clouds that carry rain, that would help. If I sing to the water and ask it to flow again in the streams and rivers and gush from the, from the springs again, that would surely help. And if I sing to the earth, the earth where plants and grasses and flowers and fruit and vegetables all grow, that would surely help. And then to finish, I'll sing to fire and ask fire not to come and burn the moors and burn the fields at this time of drought, this time of the great dryness. And that's what she did. She sang. She sang beautifully. She sang to the air. She sang to the water. She sang to the earth. And before she had time to sing to fire, the earth that she just sung to began to shake. The earth began to quake. The earth began to groan and heave and there below her feet, a great valley and chasm opened up, a great dark crack in the earth. Right there on the side of Parlick Fell. And from out of that dark crack, there walked a strange little man not a child, a little man with a long grey and silver beard, dressed in silver clothes. And behind him came an enormous cow. Now when I say enormous, I'm not talking as big as a, a bull that you might see in a field. I'm talking as big as five cows put together, one on top of the other. And when that cow walked, the earth shook and the strange man dressed in silver led that cow up the hill towards the rock where the old henwife was sitting and he spoke to her and he said I bring my cow and I will gift this cow to you and the villagers of Bleasdale and the folk round and about and this cow will give you enough milk to sustain you through this terrible time of drought as long as you let the cow drink from the spring near the top of Parlick Fell. And with that, he turned on his heels and he was away down the hill and back into that dark crack in the hillside. And as he walked in, the crack closed together. 
And there sat the hen wife, and there stood the cow. And the cow wandered off, drank the last few drops of water from the spring near the top of the hill, and then turned and wandered down towards the village. The old hen wife followed, marvelling at the size of the creature, this cow that was the same colour as the very rock she'd been sitting on. And then when the cow reached the village, it stopped. The old hen wife went and got a bucket and she milked those great swinging udders of the cow into the bucket, pss, 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 pss. And soon her bucket was full of rich, life-sustaining, delicious, creamy milk. And the other villagers came out of their cottages and they carried jugs and cups and they all milked from the cow and they all took just enough. Nobody tried to take more than one jug or one bucket full of milk. And the cow was very pleased with that. This happened day in, day out. The cow would wander about high on the fell side of Fair Snape and Parlick, drinking what few drops of water remained in, in the spring, and then it would come down and the villagers would milk it. And that might have been the end of the story. But fire was jealous. The henwife had sung her respects to the air, to water, to the earth. She'd been rewarded by the earth. But she hadn't finished a song. She hadn't sung to fire. She hadn't asked fire not to come and burn the dry parched moorlands. And one day, high up on that rocky seat, the very rock where the henwife herself had sat, there appeared a strange figure with bright red and orange hair that flickered in the sunshine and wearing tattered robes of gold and every shade of yellow you can imagine. And that creature, hard to tell whether it was man or woman, it twirled and danced and leapt around and it ran singing and screeching down the side of Parlick Fell. And then it produced, when it reached Bleasdale, from under its strange clothes, a great pot. A pot with lots of little holes in the bottom, a bit like a sieve. And then the creature went and sat and waited to milk the great dun cow which slowly lumbered down the hill after taking a drink. And the strange fiery creature milked and milked and milked and here's the thing, the pot which it had brought never ever ever filled up because of all the holes in the bottom. So as fast as it milked, so the pot emptied. And after hours and hours of being milked by the fiery creature, the cow became exhausted and the cow wandered away and laid down and died. And that was the end of the dun cow the dun cow of Bleasdale. That was the end of the supply of milk that had kept the villagers from being thirsty and from being hungry through many days. And the fiery creature in the orange and yellow robes ran screeching and twirling and whirling up the hillside, up to that rock, and sat there and watched and waited. And when the henwife saw what had happened, she remembered that she had never sung to fire she had offended fire and so it was that she finished her song and now she had sung to the air, to the water, to the earth and to fire. And the song being finished, the fiery creature with the flaming hair whirled and twirled away from the rock and was never seen in those parts again. And the black clouds came and those black clouds carried rain and it rained and the streams filled and the rivers filled and life was back to normal for the people of Bleasdale. And from that day, they always remembered to respect nature and they changed the names of the spring at the top of Parlick Fell and the, the rocky seat where the henwife had sat. They changed those names to Nick's water pot and Nick's chair. And by Nick, they meant old Nick. They meant the devil with his red face. And if you go 
and walk up Harlick. You can see Nick's chair and you can see Nick's water pot. But whatever you do, don't ever start a fire up there because fire on moorland can spread very quickly and can cause great damage. And that is the end of the story of the dumb cow of Bleasdale.